So I can do an introduction like this. God bless you, or Yahweh bless you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, my name is Aaron Cunningham. I'll be doing the teaching tonight. And I'll first start with the word, prayer, and adoration. Father, we just come to you. And we know that there is no way to the Father except to the Son, the Creator of the, all the universe, the, the, the big ones and the little ones within. Um, here's our voice if we come through His Son. And we thank you that as we bow ourselves down, as we humble ourselves to say, um, we want to hear from you, that you will work through me and you'll work inside them and you'll work through me and so that you can customize these teachings to bless them, to, to help them with their, their ministry, with their calling. Uh, and we're thankful that you hear our voice. We're thankful that we don't get put on hold. We're thankful that, that you have time for us and that you'd even want to spend time with us. For if a celebrity took interest in us, we'd be flattered. But who, who, who's bigger of a celebrity than Yahweh? the God of the Hebrews, creator of the heavens and the earth, and His Son, who is at the right hand. So we thank you for this opportunity to, to talk about you, and we thank you for you uh, coming in and, and, and ex er, energizing your message to bless all of us, so that Aaron can be peeled out of the way, and that even during this teaching, that all we see is you and your Son, and your word and your promises, so that when we leave here, we'll never be the same. And we thank you for these things through Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Mark 11, or Mark Matthew 7, 7. Be seeking, be asking, be knocking. We go to a teaching, be seeking. In your mind and in your heart, make a commitment to say, knock my socks off. I'll catch myself, I teach. Then I'll catch myself teaching, daydream going, all right, I gotta go to bed early tonight. I'm like, I, he hears my inner thoughts. Yeah. So make a commitment. And, and, and the, the teaching tonight is on imagination. Imaginations. Now, normally, the word imagination is, is not necessarily a good thing. Uh, daydreaming or imaginations with, with things in the shadows and stuff. But I heard a really neat analogy about imagination. Your imagination is a gift that the creator of the universe has given to you. And sometimes, and this is, this is new for me too, until I heard this uh, a teaching that my dad gave me. Here's a, a, a blurt out of Andrew, Andrew Womack said is, is on how to raise the dead, his whole teaching. And he, he started imagining how he would raise somebody from the dead. Or, and he started doing it before, so that was part of the teaching, but I never thought about exercising my imagination. Exercise this thing, use this. And, and, and the analogy is I was getting, a, what a wonderful time we live in. I got to give a prophecy and minister to somebody in South Africa before the teaching. Mm. Yeah, this person was ministering and thank you everybody for who was praying for me the last couple days with some spiritual warfare but man there's nothing like the peace that rises above every mind to guard our thoughts in our heart that could be I was in a, this guy gave me a prophecy he said I see you you're in the middle of the Roman Colosseum and there's all the demons and stuff you know get them get them get them but then there's a light and there's an umbrella of light and he, and he was during his prophecy over me he goes I don't know if it's if it's an angel or if it's Jesus Christ himself, you're protected. Wow. Stand firm. You're fine. And then my sister called from Miami. She gave me a prophecy saying, I see you in a foxhole. You're fine. So there's bullets going back and forth. Don't try to be a hero. You're right where you need to be. And if we are right where we need to be, then what do we care? Yeah. And when we panic in this life, it's because we, we're impulsive. We don't know what to do and we make decisions. But if we are with him in the boat, we're going to be okay. If we were with Jesus Christ, we to, it didn't matter what, what's happening. If I got him with me, I'm okay. And isn't that, isn't that what, what's wonderful when we humble ourselves and we go before him, we open the scriptures, we listen to the word of promise, and all of a sudden that peace comes. And we might not be able to understand everything, but when that peace comes, it's like a mother picking up an infant. Now everything's okay. Our father, will, through his son, will wrap his arms around us he can't communicate everything to us. Neither could Einstein communicate everything to the dog. And then another teaching was Henry Ford could understand the Ford he invented, but the Ford could not understand Henry. But our Father, he understands our limitations, and then he will wrap his arms around us and give us that peace. We're in these things. But back to the imagination. <clears throat> the imagination went through the prophecy to my friend in South Africa. <clears throat> As I was... Praying words, wonderful descriptions and things are coming out of my mouth. I'm not that smart. 
articulate and wonderful pictures were coming out. I'm like, wow, man, that, that, that was great. I feel like, a, you know, like Peter uh, getting to be around Jesus Christ during a mighty work. Man, you were really good then. When you get to do a, a miracle or a prophecy or a mighty work, it's kind of like, wow, you were really, really good. It's kind of like seeing the Beatles come off the stage. You're one of the roadies. Man, I love being with you, man. Where are we going next? And we humble ourselves with a prophecy. This is what happens. And the prophecy was this. Our Father has given you an imagination. It's up to you what you do with it. And the imagination is like a horse. The horse is a powerful animal. But if you don't put a bit in its mouth, it won't do anything. And in order to put the bit in its mouth and you get it to go places, you have to put a, a, a saddle on its back and you have to break the horse. That takes faith, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. The first couple of people that learn about bits and saddles, are, is this even worth it? This wild animal is going crazy. He's going to kill me. Mm -hmm. But what happens is they had to earn it. They had to earn this thing. And then when you see a war horse or something you see these horses are doing, that person had to earn it. And the prophecy for her was your imagination is a horse. It's a war horse. It's a stallion. It was designed to give you, to equip you, and to help you through this life. Each day when you wake up, exercise your war horse, your imagination. Where are you going today? <coughs> and if you're not using your imagination for good things, your old man, the genetics of Adam and Eve, will use it for the bad things. And so, you, and I was like, man, that's, that, that, that kind of helped me out. Now, this is a picture up here. Um, it, it, I saw this on Facebook. You see right here, here's a, a piece of coal. I guess I don't know if my PowerPoint's working. You say, a diamond is just a piece of charcoal that handles stress exceptionally well. Yeah. A diamond is just a piece of black carbon that through pressure and time, it gets crushed into this. So when man found out that, that a diamond and a coal are the same thing, they go, how? They're both 100% carbon. That doesn't even make any kind of sense. How can you turn something black into that? Now, obviously, the diamond is, is, is etched. It's a miracle. Mm -hmm. How do you handle your pressure? You go to homework? Pretty tough? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're going to be, all of us will be going through this thing. All of us are Yahweh's kids. And, and, and there's a lot of things that are happening. It doesn't mean that they're necessarily in his will, but he wants to see how you're going to handle it. You ever seen that? You, you, you could, have you ever seen that where you look at somebody on a football field, it's your kid and you're a coach, and then somebody does a cheap shot? It wasn't my, I didn't want my son to get a cheap shot, but I'm, I want, I'm interested in how he's going to handle it because if he retaliates, he's going to get a flag on the football field, and he's going to learn real quick he can't retaliate. It's the retaliator that always gets caught. And actually, I, I, was, <laughs> I wasn't always the best guy. I knew if I wanted to get somebody in trouble, what you do is you provoke somebody provoke that. So I, as, as a, a parent might watch their kids to see how they handle it, so does our Father in Jesus Christ. But how are you going to handle this? Are you going to turn on me? Or are you going to go, is this part of the training that's going to that's turn me into that? Yeah. Because without faith, it is what? Impossible, Impossible to be well-pleasing. <clears throat> so our old man and our nature is the longer we serve him, the easier it's going to get, right? Nope. No. That wouldn't take any faith. And if it didn't take faith, would you need him? Yeah. No. A perfect father doesn't ever want his children to become independent, complete, and not need them anymore. A perfect father wants them to need him more. And so our fathers, if he, in his calling, he's going to call you uphill. And if you're not using your imagination correctly, you know what you're going to do? The only thing you're going to see is going up. This isn't worth it. Turn to Acts chapter 9. So you, can, you, you can put a million scriptures with, with this coal. What does Romans 12 say? Be not conformed to this world or this age, but be transformed. In the Greek word for transform is metamorphi. I think it's the same word that we get metamorphosis. And isn't that what happens here? Mm -hmm. It got transformed. Each day, if we exercise our imagination with the scriptures and we feed ourselves, if we abstain from wickedness, if we live in the light and we repent of our sins, then we can transform mm -hmm. each day to peel off the old man and to say, what's next? And guess what? We can always handle it. He doesn't set us up for failure. 
in Acts chapter 9. Um, would somebody start, uh, Mom, would you read, start reading 9 verse 1? But Saul, yet breathing, threatening, and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, going unto the high priest, asked from him letters for Damascus, unto the synagogues, to the end that if he should find any who were of the way, whether men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. But as he was journeying, it came to pass that he was drawing near unto Damascus, and suddenly there flashed around him a light out of heaven, and falling to the earth, unto the earth, he heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why me art thou persecuting? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Yahushua, whom thou art persecuting. But rise up and enter into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. But the men who were accompanying him stood. Can you stop there for a second? In the beginning of this, it says, But Saul, yet breathing threatening and slaughter against who? Well, Yahweh yes. and Jesus Christ. Okay, who is this guy? Threatenings and slaughter. <clears throat> Yehoshua appears to him. What's the problem, Saul? <laughs> ah! <laughs> This whole thing happens, right? You know, you, you, have you ever had to tolerate wicked people in your life? Yeah. You should remember some of these stories like this. They go, okay, they can turn. Now, now I'm not going to put up with things. I'm, but I go, okay, they could turn too. But here's Saul. He's, he, all of a sudden, he goes blind. And here's a righteous man. Uh, now, if somebody would start reading verse 10. Mom, would you, it'd be good for you to read. Now, there was a certain disciple in Damascus by name Ananias. And the Lord said unto him in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Lo, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said <clears throat> unto him, Rise, go into the street, which is called Straight, and seek in the house of Judas one Saul by name of Tarsus. For lo, he is praying, and hath seen a man in a vision, Ananias by name, coming in and laying on him his hands to the intent he should seek. And Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many concerning this man how, how many evil things unto thy saints he hath done in Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the high priest to bind all them that call upon thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Be going thy way, for a choice vessel unto me is this man, to bear my name before both the nations and kings and the sons of Israel. For I will let him understand how many things he must needs for my name suffer. And Je so Yehoshua right there goes, he's my new project. Yeah. I'm going to mold him into something. He molded Peter into something, but Peter wasn't Saul. Yeah. Yeah. He goes, you're mine. Mm -hmm. And uh, he took Saul and like one of one of Yehoshua's first projects, in my own opinion, that I, I, you see with this is this guy named Saul. Yehoshua fulfilled all the Le Levitical covenant. He was tortured to death, hung on a tree, humiliated. He got back up after three days and three nights. Where's the first place he went after that? To Taurus. That's the prison where all the, 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 the angels had fallen. They're kept in some place. There's an angel prison called Tartus. It's, it's an interesting word. It's also from, out of Greek mythology. That's what they're tart, to Taurus, I think. He went down to there and went, Yeah, I'll be back. <laughs> and the next time they see Yahushua, guess what's going to happen to them? Eat them. Into the fire. <laughs> but anyway, that was one of the first things he did because for 4,000 years they are trying to kill him. And they killed or at the, the hands and feet of the adversary. We're killing his family, the people that are going before him. Then what happens next? On the day of Pentecost, he sees his disciples, but then he goes, I want this guy. And this is a uh, trust the process, this is bodybuilding and stuff. She is, a, 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 Lissette is an incredible competitor. I have never done this type of thing. But if you, want to, if you really want to succeed at sculpting your body, the hardest part is this. Because they say, you got to trust the process. 
because all the stuff that you're doing, actually, I, I'm gonna feel silly saying this in front of Lissette, is when these guys are getting ready for a show like this, you know that, that they're weak as a little girl? Yeah, you, so you don't feel big, you don't feel strong, everything's depleted, you have no energy when they get on stage. They have to keep training and their strength is going down. And you know what happens is, is they, even when they look in the mirror, they can't see any changes. And the good trainers will say, trust the process. Look at my resume. Do it. And a lot of times, if you're, if you're going to be training, it will really help you if you're paying them a lot of money. Because this is a big commitment. And you're going to go, when this is over, if they're wrong, I'm going to sue them. Or whatever's going to You hate this person. Ah, I can't stand it. Then you'll see these people get on stage and incredible things happen. And the trainers will say, trust the process. This is a transformation. This is something that people that live in the gym uh, that, that, that practice these disciplines can understand. Going, yeah, I've heard of that. This is a good trainer. He knows what he's doing. He'll show you how to die to yourself. And so what these guys do is they learn how to. Now, there's two sins we're supposed to flee from. One's pornea or fornication. The other one's idolatry. So you got to be careful with bodybuilding stuff. You start worshiping yourself, you're going to get demonized. But in this case, what they choose to do is they make their flesh their slave. Yeah. You will do this. Yeah. And, the, and their flesh is going, man, what am I eating? You guys get in line, ask her what she has to eat before a show, what she has to do to her body. No water for how many days? There's nothing. <laughs> but they do it, and they trust the process, then boom. Yehoshua, or Jesus Christ, saw your mind. And what did he sculpt them into? Powerhouse. He took a piece of coal and he chiseled it, the master, into a work of art. Because who was like Paul? No one. Who was like him? Did he tell Paul everything he was going to have to do? No. You don't want to know your future. You don't want to. Do you ever watch a movie? Do you, wanna, do you wanna know the end of the movie? No? Because if somebody tells you the end of the movie, then you're like, oh great, thanks a lot. Same way with the book. You do want it, but you don't want it. You don't wanna ruin it. Then the other thing is, is look at Moses. If Yahweh would have told Moses what was gonna happen to him, would, he, would, would that have helped Moses? No. <laughs> no, he's gonna go, all right, all I gotta do is throw a stick down to do this. I can do that, and Aaron's going to talk for me. Come here, Aaron. <laughs> here they're going, he had no idea. But at the end of his road, when Moses went to sleep, did he, would he have regretted anything? Yeah. Neither will you regret one act of obedience in this life. And this life is this big, guys. It's this big. If you were using your imagination to put all your prize in this little bitty life, you're just going to make your life way too hard. And every act of obedience is going to be such a sacrifice. This stinks. That you're, you're just making it way too hard. You're probably not going to keep up with it. Then we turn to uh, Genesis 22. So Yehoshua took Saul in a mold and he, and, and he chiseled him into the Apostle Paul. There's a... Uh, It'd be page 51 in Genesis. And you'll, you'll get to see stories and stuff, and some of the, the best personal trainers and stuff, what they will get excited about is the biggest <clears throat> obstacle. Here's somebody that there's no chance of them. Okay, but man, if I could get this thing to work, you know what my resume would look like? Mm -hmm. If I could take that and make it into that, or what did this guy look like before he trained? We'd all, oh, y'all look like that, right? Maybe not. There's a lot that they didn't look like anything like that. And the best trainers transform them into things. And those trainers can go, and if they can do it, guess who gets all the props? Okay. You go to Hollywood, they go, who's your trainer? They're going to go, yeah, he's pretty good. And even the professional bodybuilders and the professional actors, like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone, you know if they still hire? Trainer. A trainer. <clears throat> Why do they need a trainer? Because a trainer is going to be able to see things. A wise man seeks counsel. A trainer is going to go, you're fine. It's not working. I'm just going to quit. Just do it. And here's, here's Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger. 
humbling himself to somebody else that says you're on, you're on target. It's not working. It's working. You know I'm Arnold, right? Yes, I know you're Arnold. You pay me ten thousand dollars to get you ready for this. And guess what happens? That's why they do it. Tiger Woods had a coach. Tiger Woods had a, hired a coach that says we need to fix your swing. This is actually like one of the, like the, the Masters. And the, 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 you're going to tell Tiger Woods you need to fix his stroke, and they recreated his stroke. And the, does that take humility from Tiger? Mm-hmm. This guy better know what he's doing. And then his, the, here's his coach going, if I could fix Tyler Woods, I can fix anything, right? Jesus Christ, Yahushua is looking at each one of us. And he's going to go, I want the credit. I want it. And I want everybody to look at you and go, that's impossible. Who's your trainer? I'm glad you asked. Because I'd like to introduce you to him. Better take a meet first. <laughs> Anyways, turn to uh, Genesis 22. Uh, 1 through 12, would, would it would probably be good to have adults read. Uh, uh, Troy, would you mind reading? Yeah. <clears throat> 1 through 12? Uh, 22, yeah, 1 through 12. And it came to pass after these things that Elohim did prove Abraham, and he said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold me. And he said, Take, I pray thee, thy son, thine only one, whom thou lovest, even Isaac, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and cause him to ascend there as an ascending sacrifice on one of the mountains which I shall name unto thee. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his ass, and took his two young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clothed the pieces of wood for an ascending sacrifice and mounted and went his way unto the place which Elohim had named to him. It was on the third day that Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Tarry by yourselves here with the ass, but I and the young man must go yonder, that we may bow ourselves down and return unto you. So Abraham took the pieces of wood for the ascending sacrifice and laid them on Isaac his son and took in his own hand <coughs> the fire and the knife and they went on their, <coughs> their way, both of them together. Then said Isaac unto Abraham his father. Then said he, My father. And he said, Behold me, my we'll son. for a second. One really neat thing about this right here, this account, is how the Rotherham sets up the... the be the poetic yeah. you can see all these gaps in the dialogue it just it, it just really is easy to look at so go, go ahead my father he said my, behold thy, thy son and he said behold the fire and the pieces of wood but where is the lamb for an ascending sacrifice and Abraham said Elohim will provide for himself the lamb for an ascending sacrifice my son which is neat because on oh, Dad's last teaching, this is the first and second usage of the word lamb. Yeah. And who was the lamb? What what did John the Baptist say when he saw Jesus Christ? Wow. Behold, the lamb. The seed of the woman's going to come. Um, okay. It's all read. So so they went their way, both of them together. Isaac's about thirty years old. Abraham's like 120, 130 years old. Okay. Then came they to, to, into the place which Elohim had named unto him, and Abraham built there an altar and laid over the pieces of wood, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar above, above the pieces of wood. And Abraham put forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Then called out of the heavens the messenger of Yahweh out of the heavens and said, Abraham, Abraham. He said, Behold me. Then he said, Do not put forth thy hand unto thy man. Neither do to him anything at all for now. And John Lynn did that. Now is a time element. When did Yahweh know that Abraham would actually do it? He lifted the knife. Now. And he stopped. That's it. What's the purpose of this whole thing? After the teaching, if you want, I'll show you a bunch of lines under one right here. But, so, so I don't spoil some of my punchlines. For those who haven't heard an explanation to, of the story, turn to Hebrews 11. Page 231. What goes up to that, right? Who's going to win a wrestling match? A 30-year-old person or a 130-year-old man? 
Yeah, so what would that happen with Isaac and Abraham? Isaac would have said, okay. And chap we're, uh, chapter 11, page 231, the book of Hebrews. Okay. By faith, Abraham, when tested, offered up Isaac. And the only begotten would he have offered up who the promises had accepted, even him of whom it had been said, in Isaac shall there be called to thee a seed. Jesus Christ was going to come through Isaac. The, the seed of the woman of Genesis 3.15 was going to come through Isaac. And Abraham was promised that you're going to re re reverse the curse of the ground that happened to Adam and Eve. So it was, Abraham would have known everything's going to get fixed by this is the seed of woman. It's going to come through Isaac. Abraham didn't know it was going to be 6,000 or 4,000 years later. It could have been his grandson. Mm -hmm. Right? He didn't know. So, so, so in verse 19, accounting that even from among the dead, Yahweh was able to raise him. Abraham believed in a resurrection. Y'all was going to have to resurrect his kid. Mm -hmm. Here's a, and, and if you go back, to, for those of you who haven't heard this, in Genesis 51, it says that for three days and three nights, yeah. they journeyed until they found a place. For three days and three nights, Isaac was as good as dead in Abraham's heart. But did Yahweh know that he would commit to them? No, it wasn't yet. Then he turns to the guy and he says, we're going to go, I go, stay here until I and the boy, the lad, that's why people think it's a kid, it's the word lad, return. Yeah. He's going to go kill him. He, he was, he was, he's going to have to be resurrected. Yeah. Had anybody been resurrected before this? No. no. If I had to lay on top of a little kid, kid put my eyes on their eyes or raise somebody up from the dead, I'd feel very difficult. Abraham, nobody's ever been saved before. Mm -hmm. But here it was, and then it says, he put the wood on the back of Isaac. Who carried the wood up the, up the hill that he's going to die on? Isaac did. It sounds just like Jesus Christ, did not it? Mm -hmm. Jesus, Abraham, remember Jesus Christ didn't have the Holy Spirit until he was 30 years old. How was he going to know what he was going to have to do? The word. Yahweh's word. For it had been a little bit, Yahushua Mashiach, eight years old, with a lot better memory than me, reading these scriptures going on. What's going on here? What's going on here? Can you, can you imagine Jesus Christ's hunger for his father's word? Yeah, I, I can imagine him with like flashlights at night going, oh my goodness, how is this going to work out? Hold on a second. Here's a, you can imagine that Isaac Newton and, and you know all the perfect brains put into one as an eight-year-old trying to figure this thing out. And then then Yehoshua didn't have Hebrews, but Yehoshua would have read this and go, a son. Laying down his life for a father in hopes of a resurrection. Well, that's a lot like me. Abraham was helping Yahweh teach Yahweh's son what he's going to have to do. You think about that. What's more inspirational? A story you hear somebody makes up or a true story? Somebody that actually, the movie Unbroken, that guy did it. Is that inspirational? Golly, think about some of these things people have been through. A true, what does a true story do for you? Does that build you up and inspire you? Yahweh taught his son through true story events. That is neat. So Yehoshua saw So here's Abraham. And so like Yehoshua molded Saul and Paul, Yahweh molded Abram into Abraham into this thing, transforming somebody into this work of art until right about there, that's like one of the pinnacles. A neat story about that is it says the first fruits belong to Yahweh. The first one belonged to Yahweh, right? I had to do it with my son. I felt really weird about it. Well, I'm going to give him to you. And even though I wasn't actually taken to a place, I was really worried, uh, a little hesitant about it. But I said, it belongs to you. He's yours. Um, what, kind of, what kind of son do you think Abraham got back after that mountain? He gave his son... He, the relationship would have been a hundred. Can you imagine the relationship? When you give Yahweh the first fruits of your money, what happens? <laughs> Does he make it worth your while? I gave him $10. Will he give you back? Well, he gave me $750, but he gave me an IOU. 
No. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, trust the process. Yahweh molded Abraham. Yahweh molded Moses. And how did, turn back to Hebrews, how did Abraham do all this? It says that right there in, in, in Hebrews 11. Remember, the context is your imagination. And to trust the process. Use your imagination. And by using your imagination, you're activating, you're exercising your faith. If you don't use your imagination, you are in rebellion, in my opinion. Why aren't you exercising your faith in this area? It's a very powerful thing. That way your heart is, your treasures will be also. That's what Yahushua was saying, right? Verse 17, he did all this, believing in a resurrection. A resurrection has to come. Now turn right over to verse 8. Chapter 11, verse 8. Same chapter. Abra, Yahweh molded Abraham. Of Abram, father of the high place, into Abraham. But how? How did he do it? How did he do it? Because we look at Abraham and we go, man, I couldn't do that, right? Well, how do you say? You probably couldn't. How did y'all do it? Well, maybe Abraham was just, maybe he was just, yeah, he was just really unique. You know, either they both mold after him, maybe, right? Verse 8 of chapter 11. Isaiah, would you read 8 and 9? Yes. Actually, 8 through 10. The faith <clears throat> being called Abraham obeyed to come forth into a place he was destined to see for an inter inheritance. inheritance. And he came forth, not one knowing whether he, he was coming. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as a forging land, intense dwelling along Isaac and Jacob and the and joke joint heirs of the same promise. For he was awaiting the city, having found foundations, hmm. foundations whose architect architect and the builder of Yahweh. Abraham's imagination was this: the city whose maker and builder, the architect, was Yahweh. Why? The promises. This life is this long. It's this long. It's but a vapor. You know these country songs don't blink. It's depressing. Right? It could be. It could be. How did Abraham do it? This. Where are we going, Abraham? Man, this is going to be great. Now, I can imagine Yahweh walking with Abraham going, man, it's going to be big. It's going to be this. No, that's not it. That's not it. Have you ever been on a mission where Yahweh's called you to do something? And people go, is it this? You're, no, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. And you can imagine Abraham. Where was Abraham? Where was his hope? Paradise. Deceiving a woman that was going to take us back to the Garden of Eden, the new heaven and new earth, was going to come through Isaac. To my son Isaac. Wow. Maybe imagine Isaac. Hey, you know Isaac, Rebecca's got uh, had twins. Ha! No, oh, man, maybe that's in the city that he built. No, oh, grandpa, grandpa, I'm always talking about this city. Ha! No, and here this is. And then um, I think Abraham would have got to meet Joseph when Joseph was very young. Look at the time. Here's Joseph. Oh, man, hey, you guys go to go to see him. What did Abraham talk about? This city. Well, all the people during this age. We're filling up. It's like issuing the tickets. It's going to be a sold out eventually. Not, not literally sold out. But Yahweh's selling tickets. Who wants to go to paradise? The new heaven and the new earth is coming. It's coming. Every act of obedience will be rewarded. And every act of disobedience, you're going to suffer loss. Everybody's going to get to watch your movie. They're watch, you're going to watch a movie right now. This is like a live thing that somebody's going to get to watch. When we go before Yahushua at the judgment, it's going to be unedited. <laughs> Whoa, wait a minute. You're going to see everything. <laughs> but the neat thing is, is that after that, in my opinion, everybody's going to get to see the highlights. They're going to get to check out your book. They're going to watch your movie, whatever we have there. There's going to be billions and trillions or whatever amount of people and lives and stories that we can read about. We're worried about Steph Curry and Lissette. In your life that you might feel like is insignificant, who cares about my ministry? The people reading your story right now care about it. Yahweh is not limited through internet and books. 
If people will obey, does he lie? No, he doesn't. He doesn't lie. And if you act in obedience and nobody sees, does he know? Yeah. Now, can he go witness what you did to somebody in Japan right now? Yeah. He can say, "Hey, don't tell me you can't do it. Elijah Gunner just did it. Who's Elijah Gunner? You're getting to meet him in a little bit. How long? It'll be in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. <laughs> you hear a trumpet. You're moving." They got a movie. You're, you're the lead. And everyone's going to get to watch it. So how did Abraham do it? How are you going to do it? Your imagination. Where are you going? It matters. And Yahweh is saying, trust the process. Each day, transform. Just trust Him. And if it was a personal trainer, somebody hired, if you got Oral Schwarzenegger's trainer or, or Dwayne Johnson's personal trainer, and he goes, hey, I'm doing a reality TV. I want to hire Israel or Francis. We want you to be the, the two contestants. We'll pay for it. We'll pay for all your bills and stuff. So you can do it. You, are, you'd be like, are you serious? Dwayne Johnson. You can see Dwayne Johnson as one of his resumes, right? Well, what has Yahushua been able to do with people? Yeah. What did his dad do? Moses, very impressive? No? No? He doesn't need impressive. He doesn't call the high and mighty. He calls a, the lonely. People with no skills. So you got no credentials, you can't talk, you're, you're afraid of crowds, you don't know any scriptures, perfect! <laughs> Maybe I thought you were going to pass me up. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's okay, come on. Trust the, the trainer, look at his resume, trust the process. Um, so you take your, oh, we'll turn to Hebrews 12. <clears throat> so how did Abraham, not just, not just Isaac, which is one of the pinnacles, how did he do all that stuff? His treasure was the resurrection. We're going back to the Garden of Eden. When is it going to be? Who in here knows when Jesus Christ is coming back? I, had, I, I was witnessing to somebody, and I said, we don't know when Christ is coming back, and you're not even married in paradise. And she went, who can't come back until I get married? And I, I was thinking the same thing, kind of. I'm like, if you're going to be disappointed because you don't get married, then your treasures are in the wrong place. It's, or whatever it is. I, 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 and I say that, and I'm preaching to the choir. I don't know a lot of things. I, when I talk about him coming back, I'm like, just, just can, can you wait till I get some stuff done? You go to Aaron, you're not using your imagination. Hmm. What, what kind of horticulture are you going to be taking care of in paradise? Yeah. Maybe it's going to be Yahweh's prized golf course. Here's his trees. Troy, you're the head greenskeeper. You got it. I've watched what you did down here. You got it. Let's say you're going to be the, the, a trainer, or, you, or uh, I guess you'd be a mechanic, or you're a mechanic now, whatever it is. You're working on your resume. This is where we're, where we're going. And, and he, uh, Hebrews 12, oh, before we go to Hebrews 12, the whole chapter of Hebrews 11 is about faith and endurance. Faith and endurance. And it's easy to look at. By faith, Enoch. By faith, Noah. By faith, Abraham. By faith, by faith, here this is Sarah. By faith, you know, Abraham, he goes all the By faith, and he's this endurance, this endurance, and this faith that they're able to do it. How are they able to do it? Well, they were very special. They had really good genetics, not like us today. Yeah. They were doing the same thing. It's the same thing. He sees everything they're doing. He's got a clipbook, a clipboard. And he's watching what you're doing. He's going, How's he, how are you going to handle this one? Why? Because we've got lots of jobs and paradise is coming. Can you handle this? Fail. Okay. We got it. Sorry. Sorry. When somebody else looks at this and, you're going to, and, you, and somebody gives you prophecies and you get your piece, okay. Wow. Look, look out who just handled that. And in paradise, you're going to go, here we go. Just level up. We want Tim Sawyer to be in charge of this right over here. And these jobs and these positions, I believe it's not, it's not, st it's not static. We get to go up, go down. I can imagine Saul before he fell. Not, not the second Saul, but Saul, King Saul. Man, he was going up and up and up and up. And all of a sudden, he felt like he was in Saul joined some sort of union. I can't get fired. And look what happened. Man, he's not going to have any rewards in paradise. If he gets, a, if he ends up in paradise, I don't know. Solomon would have done the same thing. But if you take your treasures and go, my treasures are with the people, or what the people say, my treasures are going to be here. And that's how these leaders did it. And then we turn to 12. So we said, how did Jacob do it? 
Man, how did Joseph do it? Well, Joseph was really tough. Now, these leaders were thinking about the, about the return of the king. Going back to the Garden of Eden, uh, chapter 12. Mom, would you read uh, 1 through 2, please? Therefore, indeed, seeing that we also have encircling us so great a cloud of witnesses, stripping off every encumbrance and the easily entangling sin, with endurance, let us be running the race that is lying before us, looking away unto our face, princely leader and perfecter, Yahushua, who, in consideration of the joy lying before him, endured a cross, shame despising, and on the right hand of the throne of Yahweh, or God, hath taken his seat. Right there. How did he do it? His imagination. Where are you going? It's going to be worth it. The first seat was taken then. Where are you going to be taking your seat? Here. Use your imagination. Every act of obedience. It's not easy with a kid, with your parents. Children, honor your mother and your father. Obey your parents. Rest these things, you're going to say, okay, man, it's not always easy. Or submitting one to another, doing these things. It's not going to be easy, but if we know that we're being watched, this is live TV. It becomes a little bit easier. And he's going to go, where are you going to be sitting? Uh, and that's how your host did. We're going to turn right back here to this. Now, I, uh, now uh, go down to verse 11. Uh, Lisette, would you read verse 11 for me? But not discipline for the present indeed, seemed to be joy, but sorrow. Afterwards, however, to them who thereby have been well trained, it yield peacefully fruit, fruit of rational of righteousness. Yeah. Wherefore the slackened hands and paralyzed knees restore you. The strength coach for K State, I got interviewed to be an assistant strength coach here at one point, and this is what he had as well. Therefore, uh, the slackened hands and paralyzed knees restore. Where's your treasure? Yeah. You're being trained. You stinks. <laughs> if you, I can't do this, I can't do anything fun, I can't smoke, I can't drink, can't cuss, can't laugh at dirty jokes. What's the point of this life? Whatever you're going to say, okay, it's, it doesn't look good. But if you're not using your imagination of where you're going, it's going to be really hard. Now, Jehoshaphat did it, uh, uh, Abraham did it, these molds, how, how they did, their hope was the resurrection, the new heaven and new earth that's coming. Um, now, Romans chapter 8, verse 32. Page 158. Now I'm so thankful. Like This last couple of days, I've been in like a spiritual assault. The adversary coming at, at me. Whatever's going on. The first thought is, am I reaping something that I, I sowed that I should have known about? <laughs> Did I sow some really? No. Then what, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening? <laughs> so what do I do? I'll reach out, and a lot of you in here are speaking in tongues and praying for me. You're praying perfectly for me. And guess what happened? Also, I got peace. Yeah. Okay. You mean I'm not going to die? You know, I'm not very good to you if I'm dead. <laughs> okay, I get my peace because of you guys. I was able, I was able to do it. Then I got this peace. I got your prophecy, Francis. I got all you guys' prophecy in your word, and all of a sudden I'm going, okay. If, if I'm right where I need to be, I just need to suck it up. I'm just being trained, right? Uh, and here in verse 32. What chapter? I'm sorry. Chapter 8. He at least, who his own son did not spare, but in behalf of us all delivered him up. Abraham, when he offered up Isaac, if he was only thinking about the life that he was losing, he probably couldn't have done it. Mm -hmm. And actually it says, it, it, it says, no, he couldn't have done it that way. Was he going to lose a life? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're going to say, what, so what he had to do is he had to exercise his imagination. What am I going to get back <laughs> out of this? He had to look at the reward. Mm -hmm. Yahweh watched his son be tortured to death, spat on him. His skin and flesh ripped from him, humiliated in front of his family and his mom. He did nothing wrong. Would it have been easier for Abraham to die for Yahweh or him, for him to have Isaac die? Abraham. It would have been, I just killed me, not my son. Yahweh did that for us. 
Why? The resurrection. Y'all can look at that and you're seeing that. It says that in Romans or uh, Hebrews 12. No discipline at the time. It doesn't mean, now I'm going to say discipline. Now there is, when it comes to Yahweh and obedience, that's discipline. Other times we're just going through tough stuff. It's, it stinks, yeah. right? So why don't we just quit? Man, it's tough, man. Where are we going? Where are we going? Do you know where we're going? Some of these kids in here are going to go to California. They're going to go to Yosemite National Park. Do you know where you're going? It's pretty exciting. Do your chores. Don't get grounded. <laughs> you're going someplace great. When is Christ going to come back? We don't know. It could be this teaching. Yeah. We're going to get to see everybody. Everybody's gone to sleep. We're going to get to check it in. Death and pain will be no more. And Yahweh is able to do it too because he was focusing on the future and what's going to happen. And the neat thing about that, not only is the creator of the universe on our side, that should make us feel pretty empowered, right? Right. I got him on my side. Let's just take a look at the, the second part of that verse. How does that creator of the universe feel about you? How shall he not also with him all things upon us in favor bestow? Not only is the creator of the universe on the side of Christians where we walk out in faith and obedience, he asked his son to die for you. That's how much he loves you. If that doesn't give you encouragement, I don't know what would. What, what. So, we're, we're transforming each day. Hopefully, by the end of the 24 hours, the 12 hours, we should look in the mirror and say, Am I radiating? Am I radiating like Moses' face? I went through some tough stuff today. I got some bad things that happened. How'd you handle it, Aaron? Man, some of the stuff I didn't handle very good. <laughs> Slam some doors. No reward for that one. But I can imagine the angels walking around going, He did this one pretty good. And because of you guys praying for me, I'll be able to humble down. I don't know what's going on, man. He goes, would you like help? Yes. Why don't you ask for help? I thought I did. No, you were complaining. Oh, okay. Hold on a second. You administered to me, and then I started radiating. So will you. And then each day, trust the process. The whole teaching is trust the process. Jesus Christ died on the cross. His Father gave him to you. Now Christ wants to mold you into something. And, and transform it each day so that you can look like they've done it. So just trust the process. So we're going to hear from Father. Um, I guess I'll, I'll give a prophecy first. Going according to 1 Corinthians 14, and I'll, I'll remind you guys, it, it doesn't say prophesy when you feel like you're, you're inspired. It says be zealous to prophesy. You'll be rewarded for it. My sons and my daughters know that I go before you in every direction that I've called you to go. I've been there. I'm not asking you to do things that I don't understand. And I'm not guessing. I know what I'm talking about. And I also understand that you don't understand everything that I'm telling you to do. I understand that many things are very confusing to you. But just like a newborn baby cannot understand all the words coming out of the mother, you just got to trust me sometimes. You just got to move forward and trust me. Surround yourself with my word. Speak in tongues much. Go to believers and have them pray over you. And watch what will happen. I will wash you and I will cover you with light and radiance. And you will have more peace than you ever imagined. I will heal your wounds. And I will make you stronger. What was meant for evil, I will turn it into a masterpiece. Because I am really that good. Look at my resume, what I've done with other people. Now imagine what I will do for you and in your future. My, my children, it is a war zone all around you. All around you, every day it's a war zone. Just take my hand and I, I, I will put a bubble, a bubble of protection, a hedge of protection around you. Just go, go to me, ask me, please put a bubble around me so that I may be protected from this war zone, these bombs that are going all around me. Please protect me and I will. <coughs> My children, I don't want you to just be good. I want you to just be great. Don't just be good enough to get past, to get on to the new earth with me and my son. 
I want you to be great and try to improve each day, see what you did wrong and fix that the next day. My children, you do not need to be good. I mean, it's okay to be good, but the rewards are so much more if you are great. Amen. My children, you will be in a war. Don't be scared if you get wounds. I will heal them. I will heal them if you get big ones or small ones. I will, he I will heal them. So don't be scared when you go to war. Don't run away. Don't hide in a small space. Go out there first, and I will heal the and I will heal the wound wounds if you take my hand. Amen. Mm. My children, every day is a war. Is a war going inside you? And sometimes if your day goes bad, the, the old man wins. Every every day you have to practice. You have to practice. New, you have to practice your imagination to win. Every day I want you to try your hardest to win. Receive my correction and my instruction. Receive it with joy because I care for you. This is why I give it to you. And as this happens, it will be chipped away all the weaknesses and the and and the little things that stop you from being your best will be chipped away. For I am your God and your Father, and I see the diamond that's within you. I want this darkness chipped away. I want you to be able to see what I see when I see you becoming what I want you to be. My sons and daughters, come to me and, and separate yourself that you may come to me in private and and seek counsel and seek wisdom and be able to, to, to speak the things of your heart to me that I may be able to answer you and, and fulfill you and stir within you. Know that uh, as, you, as you come before me to, to separate and have more time, plan every day for your, for your time with me and make this at the priority and not if there is extra time or slack time. But, but it is important to have these things so you will not miss anything and that nothing will slip through the day that I may be able to, to work within you and shine the lights upon the steps that you are to take for of everything I can inspire and, and give course correction and counsel for you. The children, climb the mountain that's before you. <clears throat> Every day climbing further and further than the day before. And once you reach the pinnacle, once you reach the top, rejoice and then find a bigger mountain and tackle it. Hmm. Hallelujah. Hmm.